All right, now it's Moss OSR, old school rotary. And what we got here is uh, the 10A rotary engine. So you guys remember uh, from all these other videos, it's been a long road to get to this point. And uh, we're finally here. I got a good set of rotor housings. Chrome's looking good. Got a lot of life in them. Good rotors, no damage, everything's good. Uh, I got these uh, lapped at Mazda Tricks. So, okay. This video, as you guys know, is um, based more on the centric shaft. Um, we still gotta um, inspect it and clean it. And that's what we're gonna pretty much do in this video. But I wanted to share with you guys first uh, uh, how the 10A uh, building is coming along. Uh, it's been a long road, finally here. We just gotta uh, take care of this uh, eccentric shaft, make sure it's clean and make sure it's um, it's nice and straight. If it's not, we'll go send it out and get it straightened out. But um, hopefully that's not the case. But uh, just a little quick update on you guys. Uh, so we're, we're good, we're ready to go. So uh, without any further ado, let's jump into it. The eccentric shaft does have a little bolt right here in the back. And what you do, you remove that bolt with one of these uh, Allen wrenches and that would just give you easy access to uh just clean out everything and and if there is any uh debris or or or, or carbon buildup that's inside you could just go ahead and uh just uh wire run a wire brush through here and just clean it out and not worry about it uh getting stuck inside and and, and clogging up your uh oil gallers here so all right here we go So Mazda had this boat on the backside on the 10As, 12As, and I believe even on the 13B GSL SE after the after 85, I believe um I think I don't quote me on it, but I believe the GSL SE still had it in the back, had this boat in the back. But after 85, Mazda just totally switched it from the back down to the front over here. So Mazda put a thermal pellet in the front. So what a lot of people do, they take them off from the front and they just clean it out through the front now. So with this 10A, so you guys can see, it's just like the 12 bases in the back. Now I am gonna have to switch uh, these O-rings here. And the reason being is that, uh, I, you know, I mean, it's a 10A, it's been there over 50 years. So um, I don't want uh, any oil leaking out of here. So if you guys uh, have any uh, 12 A's and you change that uh, big O-ring, it goes in the back, the big orange one, and your engine's still leaking from back there. Chances are that uh, your oil rings here are probably worn out, or um, they just uh, probably tore with the, you know, it's it just wear and tear. They, they they wear out, and you might have a little tiny leak coming from here. And obviously, you know, the the, the more you rev it, the more it's going to leak out. It gets hot, it's going to leak out, and so usually it's that big orange uh, donut-looking uh, seal that goes in the back. Um, that's usually a dead giveaway, but if you swap that out and it's still leaking, there you go, might be this. Alright guys, and there it is. So um, 
what I'm gonna go ahead and do next, just basically just uh, wipe it down with some uh, WD-40 and obviously uh, spray some uh, WD-40 inside these little uh, oil galleries and just kind of spin it around. And the only reason why you want to do this is just so uh, you don't want uh, the centric shaft to uh, start uh, rusting on you. All right, fellas, uh, got the centric shaft all cleaned, lubed up, put some WD-40 so it won't flash rust. Um, I got a bore scope over here. So you guys can see, and um, we're gonna go inside the eccentric shaft and show you guys basically what, what the way it works and and what's in there. And uh, I'm just doing this just to make sure there's no carbon buildup or any any chunks of carbon or anything like that. So this is just a good way to go up in there and see uh, the condition of it. Go ahead and uh, just start right here in the end. And I got this close hanger here, and uh, we're gonna start off in the first hole and just to make sure that you know. It's it's clear, so I don't know if you guys could see it there in the in the camera there. That's the close hanger, so that's that's the first. So that's where the uh, rear uh, bearing sits, and then we move forward. This is where the rotor bearing sits. Here's the close hanger, and if we keep moving on, we're gonna go to the second rotor, and you can kind of see the light right there, but I'm put the close hanger just to make sure that you guys see that and it looks pretty darn clean in there I don't see no no uh, no debris or any chunks of carbon or anything like that it looks pretty pretty darn clean so that's the second rotor gallery and then this one here this is where the uh, where the front bearing sits the gear bearing and if we keep moving forward more uh, further down uh, there's another uh, oil gallery where that's where the spacer sits There we go. I don't know if you guys could see that Here goes the bore scope So we ran it through here and we went to all these uh, oil galleries here and That's how uh, oil gets to the uh, rotors. So All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and uh, just swap out the o-rings on this uh, boat over here All right, and these were uh, these are pretty much toasted, um, snapped right here. So I do have an assortment of uh, O-rings here, and uh, wow, right on the money. There we go. This one is uh, seven sixteen by five eighths by three thirty twos. So um, you could get this on Amazon or you know your local hardware store, or you could pretty much get these assortments anywhere. So I always keep them around because you never know what you're gonna need. So. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and take this one off here now. All right, and there we go. So there we go. So next we're gonna um, get some Teflon tape. It did have some Teflon tape when I took it off. So we're just gonna just put a little bit. It's gonna go around twice. All right, so we got the bolt in, it's nice and tight. It's, it fit right in there nice and snug. So uh, next, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, just uh, finish up the video with uh, just checking our uh, eccentric shaft, make sure it's not warped or anything like that. So uh, I do have a digital uh, dial indicator. Well, it's not a dial indicator, it's a digital indicator. But um, anyway, and then I, uh, I got a stand over here, it's a magnetic stand. And the reason why I moved from my workbench to uh, to my mill machine here it's because uh, you need something sturdy you want something that's not going to shake you're going to need something where the v blocks are going to be nice and firm it's not going to warp and my workbench is made out of wood so any little movement i make as far as like just twisting this back and forth uh it's gonna any way you add it's going to go up and down and it's not going to give you an accurate reading so you want to make sure you, uh, you place your v blocks on a firm and steady uh base in this case, uh, I'm gonna use uh, the base on my uh, mill. 
and obviously uh, a pretty good uh, stamp for your indicator and a pretty good indicator or dial indicator this one's digital so uh, you want to go ahead and uh, first what I do uh, I just try to center it as much as possible uh, to the cutter key right here and then once I have it centered I'll just drop it a little more and just uh, zero it in so uh, let me just go ahead and put the camera down and show you guys all right so uh already i set up the dial indicator uh it's nice and tight right here uh this, there's another knob down here just to adjust it and uh so what i did i just went ahead and i just centered it to the cutter key so that's what you want to make sure that uh it's just centered down to the pin right here so this is centered to the cutter key and it's uh centered all the way down so that way you know you got a dead center uh, with both so if um, you watch closely over here, I don't know if you guys can see the numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lift this up a little bit. And the knob down here, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it. And and it's going down now, so I'm gonna keep going down until the numbers start to change. And there we go, the numbers change. So all I do, I just hit this uh, zero. And the key, it's all in uh, setting up and making sure so as you guys can see, this thing is very sensitive. So there we go, it's on zero. And it might take me a couple times to uh, make sure I get it on zero. And it looks like it's on zero. And if you guys see the edge right here, I really don't have it like right on the lip right here. Cause sometimes when, when you tighten up the, the front pulleys, the lip right here just kind of tends to like warp a little bit so i always try to keep it like at least about a quarter inch or, or an eighth of an inch from there so just wanted to point that out so uh if you guys keep close watch on that uh on those numbers it shouldn't read anything it should stay at zero now if it gives us like a one negative one or positive one then we know that it's um it's warped so in this case um it's still at zero and I don't know if you guys noticed I was spinning it but let me spin it back and it's still at zero so I'm starting here at the cutter key and I'm gonna try to go all the way around without passing that cutter key or the groove for the cutter key so there we go so that's what we want to see we don't want to see uh, any any fluctuation on there we want it right at zero at all times so that's an indication this is a good center shaft it's not warped or anything like that so if it were warped i'm gonna try to lift it up right here and you see that it would read one number and then it would read a different number and it would just it would just change like crazy and all right then that's all there's to it fellas so uh there we go center shaft is nice and straight nice and clean um it's gonna look nice and fresh in about a few more days i'm gonna send it into a uh, mazda trick so they could go ahead and uh, polish up the center shaft I, I didn't mention it earlier but it does have uh, some some grooves on here but uh, that's something mazda tricks could take care of it um they are going to go ahead and uh, balance the whole rotating assembly i'm gonna have them do that uh just because i want this 10 to last uh as long as as long as it can right so uh there we go fellas uh, if you guys enjoyed this uh video just go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe and if you guys got any comments or anything or i might have missed something or if you guys feel that uh uh you guys got a different method to go about it uh, let us know in the box below so uh yeah thanks guys for watching and um we're out